a lot of things have been ongoing and uh, uh, according to what we're getting the report especially from our business team uh, gas export from the FPSO Kwame Kuma was suspended on Thursday morning following what Talo described as an abnormality in compression but um, um, George Riafi of our business decks also says that well it also means we could have some likely shortage of power and uh, just like I don't have water at home it could also mean that I wouldn't be having um, the power for some time is that a possibility it's something that uh, I guess we just don't have to gloss over we have to talk about it and so George Raffi has joined me George how are you I do. Mm, right. I'm good uh, what does it mean because when I heard the news uh, on radio yesterday I said George George is putting fear in <laughs> us again fear and panic. <laughs> yes. but, but, but really um, is it a serious situation or is it just a routine well, situation? It, it could be a, situ a, a serious situation if they don't have the necessary backups in place. But just a quick background. I mean, we used to depend heavily on crude uh, to power our plants. But when prices were hitting the roof, they had to look at alternatives to power our plants. And gas was obviously cheaper. So we were doing the West African gas pipeline. Then the Ghibli oil field came on board. Then we had the Atobo gas infrastructure project. So it was time for us to celebrate. Hooray! So we started trying to uh, work on some of our generating plants to do both crude and then gas as well, while some are also just gas totally. Okay. So the Ameri plant, for instance, and those plants in their Boise and Clay decided to uh, work on the systems to take gas from the Ghibli oil field. So what we have right now is any time the guys or the people on the Ghibli oil field extract oil from the seabed, when you try to extract some gas, evaporate out of the ground. So you have a separate um, equipment that actually captures this gas then exports it to the Ghibli oil field. So anytime there's a problem with production on the Ghibli field, then it means that they cannot export the gas. When you also look at the equipment that the Atobo gas processing plant, they don't have facilities to store the gas. So as soon when the gas are exported from the Ghibli field to the Atobo processing plant, they also onward export to those uh, plants in the Atobo gas enclave. So when that thing happened on Wednesday night, actually, it meant that supply or pressure actually lowered. So for those plants that depend heavily on gas from Atobo, it means that the pressure is dropping today, it will go down today, and Talo is saying that it will take them about 36 hours to try and fix the situation. So that is just one part of it. Now. There's a problem with the machine on the Ghibli oil field or the Ghibli FPS, so that is used to extract or helps in extracting oil from the seabed, what they'll call the turret bearing. They started working on the last year, and as we understand for this year, there might be some shutdowns again to try and work on that equipment. So basically, whilst they're working on that equipment, we're going to have some shutdowns from February to June. What is being done from February 3 that they have announced will be just trying to uh, lay some pipes to connect to the 10 oil field, another oil area from the Ghibli field, that is the, uh, John, uh, the uh, John Evans at Tunnels FPSO. So what they are trying to do right now is to try and lay pipes from the Atuabo area to connect to the 10 field. So while they work on the Ghibli field, they can still take gas from the 10 field that will start maybe from March or even May. So they are two separate things that are happening, hmm. that if uh, managers do not have the necessary backups in place, hmm. we could be getting to the era of doomsday. Well, it's true. Um, we know that at the time when we were flaring gas, it was uh, just waste. Mm. Now we're trying to make sure that we put the gas into mm. good use, and that's why we have you all these plants it. around. And, and Roland, being on the, the Ghibli FPS, as well as the uh, tunnels as well, these operators are, when it comes to safety procedures, they wouldn't risk anything. So even though some will say that, why don't you do the two at the same time? Well, let's hold production and then let's try and work on this thing. So the logical question an ordinary Ghanaian will ask is, what is the backup? What is the alternative? Well, in the past, we've had the managers of the space assuring us that everything is under control. Um, we don't know whether that is still the situation as we speak right now, because then you should have reserves or crews there to quickly switch. And even with the problem to these machines is that even trying to switch itself, you need to break or stop uh, generating power as well in trying to do the switch. So even if they are showing us that they wouldn't be doing so, there might be some blips in supply 
to some parts of the country. So ultimately, it, it means that we're going to have some shortages in supply. Possibly, possibly, unless we get a different assurance from these managers that we have X, Y, Z. But don't forget that this was a planned shutdown. So it wasn't one. I mean, what happened just Wednesday night was an accident. That would be a problem. But Talu had communicated to all the partners that this thing would happen. So we also believe that the managers of the generating plants, VRA, the T3, the T2, were all putting some measures in place, whether they're going to bring in additional crude and store. So when this thing starts happening, they can switch to gas. But the problem is even about the switch itself is also not good because you have to stop the machine, do the change. Today you do this, and whether we might have to even <laughs> get machines that are exclusively for gas and exclusively for crude. So even trying to switch from gas to crude, you might need some break in power generation, and that could also uh, result in some challenges with respect to power supply in some parts of the country. Now, at the end of the day, is that we need to have consistent supply. Mm. What we're, we're, we're told by the ministry heads and even those who tend to head the state agencies was that we had we had enough generating capacity mm. uh, so why then do we have shortages or are likely always to have shortages if we tend to have um, shortage in gas supply uh, Roland if you look at the hard equipment if I could say I think we have it now and we are getting to a point where some would say over oh, capacities I can use okay. that the so problem the is problem what? is with the fuel to power these plants oh. and they don't come cheap Roland, whether you cheaper, want to relatively, relatively. So when we have problems, we have to depend on crude or which gas, is expensive. Which, you know, the, the, it's, it's, it's <laughs> been argued that Roland, <laughs> the problem with the power sector is funding, is capital. It's problem. a money issue. It's a money issue, and don't forget that there are other competing sectors that whoever is managing the economy has to deal with. Are you going to pump everything to the power sector? What about the other sectors as well? So, yeah. you should have the required money in place that. At any point in time, you can step in to address the problem. So are you going to use all the money to buy crude and store them for this eventuality, or what are you going to do? So that is where, in terms of hard equipment, we have them in place. But do we have the fuel? Do you have enough money to buy crude? It's now still trading at around 50 or 60. To buy them in volumes, to store them for this eventuality, or what? So as for the equipment, we have them. But the problem has, has to do with get them the fuel to store, even with the lean gas. They have something where they are vessels where you can actually store them on the sea, and when you need them, you pipe them through your machine. So it's, that's where the problem is. We'll see how that goes. But for the ordinary um, user, mm. the domestic user, uh, at least we should be able to um, contain the situation. Mm. Uh, what about the industry? That's, that's the biggest, one of the biggest challenges, because for some of these industries, you know they are relying on the national grid. So they can't rely on generating plants to power the operation. Because so it's expensive. It's quite expensive. It, it so affects the That overhead. is where the problem is. Don't also forget that when it comes to LPG, Jubilee is not giving us LPG. So have those various, uh, what do you call it, refineries now turned to the Jubilee gas for the LPG? It means that there could also be problems with LPG for domestic consumers as well. So uh, we might have to engage those who are managing uh, the power sector to see the alternative plan for us as we speak right now. Not only power for domestic consumers and industries, but even domestic consumers of LPG could be having some problems. Well, w what is the view of uh, civil society or, or so-called uh, think tanks mm -hmm. and the experts on, on some of these things? I think it's about this energy sector that, and how we can pay them quickly to ensure that these uh, power sectors and power companies can get the necessary money to finance these things. Because previously, you remember the banks were saying that, listen, you have too much debts on your books, mm -hmm. we mm -hmm. won't give you money. Now government has started paying, or government started paying these energy sector debts. And there's a hope that the books could be a little bit clean so that they can lend it to them or grant them those loans so they can go out there and basically uh, bring in the necessary fuel uh, to power these plants. 
Well, we hope that uh, we have an end insight on this and we can get some news from Taloa by the close of the day. But something that we didn't plan for, mm. uh, we know that during the week the, there were some incrementing, um, is it fuel? Yeah, at the marginal, yeah. Mm. The marginal, you marginal. call them marginal. If you look at just for the second window, uh, between uh, 2 to about 4%. Uh, and if you look at a gallon, we're getting a gallon of petrol for about uh, 18 Ghana cities. Now you're doing about uh, 20 or even 19.5. Depends uh, on That is why I was talking about marginal. But mm. uh, for someone like you, who is one very city, rich, uh, one has, city. A lot, has a lot of money. You and I, we don't, um, we don't have um, money. So yeah. don't even say we're... Uh, you I'm talking about you. Uh, yeah, maybe we do, we it won't be a problem at all uh, in we, trying we, to fill your tank. Both of us do relatively almost around the same type of work. But at the end of the day, the ordinary consumer will, will be really informed this. Because if it's... Uh, a markup of uh, from the previous pricing mm. of just uh, those percentage points. It's it's really on a dent on their budget. Uh, the basically, and don't forget that nobody will walk to the pumps to buy a liter of petrol. They buy in gallons. So imagine there's an increase of uh, even one peso per liter, and you're buying five liters or 4.5. You look you look at the impact on your budget as well. So obviously, it's going to affect your budget. It's going to impact on the cost of living. At the end of the day, if I'm a trader, I have another for the Christmas. Okay. I'm going to pass on that cost to you. If transport operators, and if you look at the cumulative increase from January 1 to date, we've done about 12% or even 13 or 14%. And for these transport operators, their argument was that if it goes beyond 5%, that could trigger an increment in transport fares. So uh, if these operators are saying that we cannot absorb these hikes, someone has to take care of that cost. We'll pass it on to you. And you know how fuel and transport fares are very critical in the body economy and when it comes to cost of living as well. For businesses also, their cost of production also go up. Somebody has to take care of that cost and has to be you anytime you walk to that shop uh, to buy that good when that service is rendered to you. But we know that uh, the increments mm. or the change in pricing is... Um, is adjusted automatically. Mm. Uh, but how often does it come? Well, the, the, the the because of the deregulation, we have about over 100 um, oil marketing companies in the system right now. The plan was that let's get the regulator out of the market so the players themselves could set their prices. So depending on your cost input and all those things, it would end up influencing on your final price. So even per this whole policy that is enforced, we could see even prices going up or being reviewed every day depending on the cost input. So if it's going to cost me more to bring in the finished product uh, to the market, I have to pass it on to someone. If it's a little bit cheap, and that is why some will say the city is very critical here. Because if the city is not doing well, and I still need more Ghana cities to get the same volumes of petroleum products down here, someone has to take care of that cost. And we're seeing all these adjustments because of the relatively uh, where the, the city, city is has not doing well, has dwindled. Yeah, and someone as, uh, and someone has to take care of that cost. Its performance against yeah. the international the dollar. currency. Yes, mainly the dollar. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much, George. Thank you so much, Roland. Okay. So we'll try as much as possible give you the latest updates on this power crisis issue, if we're ever going to have any at all. But we also know that um, the gas will not be coming from the fields, and uh, we'll try as much as possible get to the experts at Talo and the other. Uh, companies around and see whether we can get a lot more details on this by the close of the day on the channel as well as uh, on Joy FM, etc. But George Raffi, we have to thank him, is with uh, the business team and thanks. Thank have a great weekend, George. Uh, the weekend starts actually now, right? Okay. Uh, <laughs> so you give me a bottle of beer if you can. And um, that'll be it for the show this morning. Uh, we're grateful that you've stayed with us since um, the better part of um, the three hours we've been here. Uh, just get interactive because we're always live on Facebook, join us on TV. It's where we stream. And we also have a Twitter handle, join us on TV. I have my personal handle on Twitter, Ro Walker Ghana, and Roland Walker is my page on Facebook. But please, let's get interactive throughout the rest of the day because we have regular programming on the channel. But that'll be it this morning. We hope that you join us same time on Monday. Bye-bye.